بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله so uh, today we're gonna continue uh, or start a new chapter chapter 3 ان شاء الله this is in the blackboard chapter 3 ان شاء الله we're gonna start mechanical systems this is the first and most important dynamic system that we're gonna study in this course mechanical systems so we will start with the units Uh, briefly talk about the units, review the units and mechanical system, basic elements, what are the basic elements in mechanical systems, and uh, how to model mechanical systems, how to mo model mechanical systems. We will also talk about uh, energy method, another method to model uh, uh, mechanical systems, and we will have also more examples to solve. All right, let's, let's get started. All right. So this is the chapter three, mechanical systems. Okay, the objective of this chapter is to uh, study the basic elements. What are the basic elements of mechanical systems? How they work in order to model the mechanical systems. Okay, model them, get the equation of motion or the mathematical model, the differential equation. Okay, remember when we define the uh, system, what is a system? System is a combination of components acting together to perform a certain task or job. Okay. Before I continue, let me double check if we are recording. Yes, we are recording, good. All right. All right, so we're gonna review the uh, system, the mechanical system, what's the units? Okay, we're gonna focus only on SI units. Then we're gonna review Newton's laws of mechanics, which we, we will use to uh, derive the equation of motion. We will go through the elements, what are the basic elements of any mechanical system, mass spring and damper, how to model mechanical systems, how to use the energy method in addition to Newton's uh, laws of mechanics, okay, to derive the equation of motion. Okay, units of mechanical systems, okay. We will use SI units, SI units are the international units for mass, kilogram, length, meter, Time second force n. EE is engineering English, just for your information. EE is used in the States, in the United States. It's different from the English units the, uh, that's used in the textbook, the theory, okay, in physics, like in physics or dynamics. The ma major difference between EE, engineering English, and the English, the theoretical in English units, is that uh, engineering English use uh, both mass and force as a reference in the calculation of other uh, of other units okay in SI units the major uh, or the primary dimension is the mass everything derived from the mass okay this is the major difference so we're going to use SI units as in the textbook Newton's laws if you remember Newton's laws from physics and dynamics what is the Newton first law Newton first law is the definition of momentum. A body is at rest or in motion, will remain at rest or in motion unless there is an external force acting on it. This is the definition of momentum. Newton's second law, we're going to use it heavily in this chapter to derive the equation of motion. What is the Newton's second law? It is the, uh, uh, the, the uh, derivation of the momentum is equal to the, to the total sources or the total forces acting on a body, or the mass of the body times its acceleration will be equal to the uh, summation of forces acting on a body. If you use this equation, you will derive the equation of motion or the mathematical model of any mechanical system. We will see examples how this is working, okay? Newton third law, this is the law that we use, if, you've see, if you remember the uh, If you remember the uh, uh, free body diagram, the free body diagram, okay? We use it heavily in, in the free body diagram. For every action, there is a reaction equal to opposite, uh, equal in uh, magnitude and opposite in direction. This is the Newton third law. All right, so this is a quick review of the units. We will uh, be uh, much slower, okay, when the topic is in you, okay? I will try to be much slower when the topic is in you, okay, to you. But uh, because you know already the, uh, this material, uh, the pace is faster. So we save our time. Okay, 
Mechanical systems. What are the basic elements of mechanical systems? Remember when we defined any system, a combination of components acting together to perform certain task or job? So what are the uh, elements of mechanical system? Any system, any mechanical system can be composed of one or the three of these uh, elements, mass, spring, and damper. Mass represent the inertia of the system. Spring represent the flexibility of the system. Damper represent the resistance to motion of the mechanical element, okay? Let's, let's talk about each one, okay? Let's start with the mass, the inertia source, okay? This is how we draw a mass, okay? If, we, if the mass is uh, uh, in uh, tran translational motion, and this is how we uh, uh, draw the mass if it's uh, like a disc, if it's in torsional motion, okay? In torsional motion. The SI unit for the mass is kilogram. And for the, uh, uh, if it's in torsional motion, we use uh, mass moment of inertia, kilogram per uh, times meter squared. Okay, this is for the mass. Calculation of inertia. This is just a quick review of uh, dynamics and physics. Calculate what is the uh, definition of mass moment of inertia? The definition of mass moment of inertia is the integral of the radius of the area of the mass with respect to the mass, okay? What if the mass, what if you want to calculate the mass moment of inertia of anybody around a certain uh, axis or certain point? Then we will use mass moment of inertia, the, the uh, what we call this, you remember from uh, dynamics, parallel axis theorem, okay? If you want to calculate the mass moment of inertia of any mass, of any mass around a certain point, then it will be the mass moment of inertia of that mass around its center plus the mass times the radius or the distance between the mass and the center of rotation squared. Okay, for example, I wanna calculate, okay, let me use the pen. I wanna calculate J, the mass moment of inertia, of this uh, pendulum around O, not the center, around O, this O, okay? It's gonna be how much? It's gonna be the mass moment of inertia around the center of this mass plus the mass times the radiance or the distance, which is L here, squared, right? All right, now this is center point. Center point means what? The, the, uh, the, uh, there is no area. Area is equal to how much? The area of the radius is equal to zero, right? The radius of the area is equal to zero. So this will be how much? This will be zero, center mass. So J around O will be simply what? The mass times the distance squared. As simple as that, okay? All right, now the second element, spring. Spring represents what? represent the flexibility of the system. Okay, this is how we draw a spring. Okay, similar to a resistor in uh, electrical systems. Now, if we apply a force here, there will be elongation, right? There is a relationship between the applied force and the elongation, okay? And usually the relationship is really linear. The more force you apply, the more elongation you will get, okay? This, the slope of this uh, linear function, we call it what? We call this the stiffness. This is the stiffness, okay? So stiffness is equal to what? K. How to calculate K? K will be the force, the applied force, over the elongation or displacement, okay? It's constant, okay? If it's linear relationship, it's constant. All right, what if both ends of the spring are moving at the same time? We have X1 and X2, and we are applying the same force on both ends then the uh, equivalent force will be equal to the stiffness times x1 minus x2, as simple as that. Just, just subtract x, x1 and x2 and you will be fine. Uh, sometimes we have torsional spring, like this one, and this is how we draw it. Okay. For torsional spring, uh, the relationship is between the applied torque and the angular displacement. Applied torque and angular displacement. So the angular, the, the angular stiffness will be simply what? The torque over the stiffness. 
the torque over the stiffness. Okay. If you apply torque on both ends, if we have theta one and theta two on both ends of the spring, both of uh, both ends are moving at the same time. How are you going to calculate the torque? How are you going to calculate the torque? It will be the stiffness, which is constant, times theta one minus theta two. As simple as that. All right. What's the SI unit for the stiffness? Newton per meter. And for torsional stiffness, a Newton meter per radians okay linear spring and nonlinear spring what's the difference between linear and nonlinear spring all right now you see this line this is the applied force and this is the elongation of the spring if the relationship between the applied force and the elongation is constant or linear in other words k here this is k right if k is constant then we call this what? Linear spring. If K is not constant like this one or this one, then we call it nonlinear non -linear spring. Okay, as simple as that. All right. Now, the spring that you see in the field, in the actual spring or the practical spring, uh, usually it's nonlinear. Usually it's nonlinear. But in the textbook, we will assume all the problems are linear. Why do you think is that? Because in most cases, in most applications, we're talking about what? We're talking about very small displacement in most dynamic systems, okay? In most dynamic systems, we're talking about very small elongation. So for, for very small elongation, this can be what, Yeshua? This can be considered as linear. So we can assume it's linear and you will get ac accurate results. Very much similar results to the actual one. All right. Ideal, ideal, let me erase this. Ideal spring and practical spring. What's the difference between ideal spring and practical spring? Ideal spring, we assume no mass, no damping, only stiffness. Like the one that we see in the problems in the textbook and in the exam. Practical spring, the actual spring, it has mass and it has damping in addition to the stiffness but why, we, why do we assume always we have ideal spring in the problems that you will see in the textbook? Because the mass, the actual mass and the damping of the spring is ignored. It's very small as, uh, as compared to the actual stiffness or the actual job, okay, or major role of the spring. Okay, so we, we, we do not consider them, okay? We ignore them and we will get accurate results, very much similar to the ideal spring, okay? All right, damper. What is a damper? Did you see a damper before? This is the linear damper or the uh, translational damper. Okay, like a piston or shock absorber. Okay, and we do, usually we call it B in, in uh, Ogata's book. We call it B in control. We call it B, and in, in uh, vibration they call it C. Same thing. It's the, it has the same meaning. Okay. So if you apply a force here, if you apply a force here, there will be elongation, right? What's the relationship between the force and elongation? The applied force is equal to a constant. This is the applied force. Relationship between, not the elongation, relationship between the, for, uh, the force and the time derivative of the elongation, the, display, the uh, velocity of the displacement okay it's going to be linear so this relationship is b and we call it what we call it the damping uh, uh, the damping or the uh, uh, viscous uh, uh, coefficient or damping coefficient okay okay so we call it b or we call it in vibration c same thing okay it's the same B in control and vibration they call it C. Okay? So this is the relationship. What if both ends are moving at the same time? And we have here X1 and here X2. Then the result, the resulting force, is the difference between X1 dot and X2 dot. As simple as that. And also for the torsional displacement, the same thing. Same thing. Okay?
All right. The unit for a damper is Newton per meter per second. And if it's in torsional motion, the coefficient of damping will be a Newton meter second per radians. Same thing here. For the damper, the same thing. We have linear damper and we have nonlinear damper. Linear damper, uh, B is constant. B is constant. Okay, for linear damper, B is constant. Okay. For nonlinear, B is not constant. However, in the book, we will assume all the time, we will assume linear. Why? Because this is small. Okay, small. So it is the same. Okay, it's going to be linear. Okay, it is the same. Okay, ideal damper. Ideal damper has no mass. No stiffness, only damping. Okay, practical damp it has mass and stiffness in addition to the damping roll, but usually we will assume always ideal uh, damper because the mass and the stiffness effects are very small as compared to the actual damping of the system. Okay, so this is a good introduction to. Okay. All right. Uh, what we're gonna do next? This is the actual. What uh, this is the real work of this chapter. What you need from this chapter. What we're gonna do next? We will learn how to model mechanical systems. How to get the equation of motion. Okay. We will learn uh, review free body diagram. How to derive the equation of motion. Okay, these, these are the major things that we will come or uh, need from this chapter. Let me go quickly, show you quickly what do I mean by a mechanical system. This is a mechanical system. You see, mass, spring and damper. And there is displacement, there is a, a external force here, for example. What we're gonna do next, inshallah, we will learn how to model the system, how to get the equation of motion, the mathematical model. We will do it step by step, inshallah, together. All right. This is the equation of motion, by the way, you see? It's a differential equation. This is the mathematical model. How to derive this mathematical model? We will start, inshallah, next next lecture, inshallah. I will show you step by step how to derive this, inshallah. Okay. And we will go through this, inshallah, uh, next class. Okay. Thank you very much. And see you, inshallah, in the next lecture. Assalamu alaikum.